guys, so we're pulling up to the gravel pit. First thing, if you've never been to a pit before, you gotta let them know you're pulling in. You generally are assigned a uh, truck number by your company, and then they will reference your truck number when you tell them what company and what truck number you're pulling in with. First thing you're gonna do, well for us, we're gonna dump our spoils off. And then they're going to send us across the scales. Generally, it's only the first time in the pit for the day that they send you across the scales to get your tear weight, which is your empty, non-loaded weight. Um, and for the most part, that's the only time you have to go over the scales empty. About the only other time you have to do that is in the winter time, when things start freezing in your box, is material builds up through the day. Obviously, you don't want to get charged for material that you're not actually taking out. And so what we would do sometimes if we had a lot of stuff building up in the box that we weren't able to scrape out, is we would re-tear in halfway through the day just so they had a better weight with the excess material in the box. But all that to say, you generally only tear in one time. You go in and pull into the pit, they load you up, and then you scale out, and that's how they know how much material you're taking in and out of the pit. So I'm gonna leave the camera on. We'll see what I do with the footage here, whether I fast forward, but we're gonna drive up here and dump and then I'll take you through the pit experience of getting loaded and then scaling out. Anything you want to add to that? Pretty much right on. Sounds good to me. All right, so here we go for the ride. been in a pit before they do not want you getting out of your truck unless you are in a designated tarp area that is one thing about pits they're very very conscious about safety OSHA is all over them so do not get out of your truck unless you are specifically instructed to or you're in a designated tarping area just a little nugget for you there you can see down in the pit that's where we'll go get material here in a minute They have a dozer pushing, or do you just dump up against the edge and they'll doze it out later? Or yesterday they had a whole bunch of side dumps hauling in here. Yeah. So they had a dozer up here full time, but today it doesn't look like it's very busy, so gotcha. Good to go. Pull over by the edge here so we can see down. They're pretty lenient then. Are they? Point goes on in here. Yeah. That's for us. But that's the nice thing about the smaller local pits. Yeah. We have some pretty big ones, Levy Company and stuff. Yeah. You don't get out of your truck yeah, or you get bitched at big time. Right. So here's the pit. Looks like a couple 980s they got running down there loading out. They got a couple screening plants, some stackers. Oh man, look at that glorious sand. Oh, Anybody from the south? Are you drooling? <laughs> well. All my buddies in Texas, you never seen so much sand, have you? It's all sand up here. So generally, with these pits, what they'll do is they'll take it down with regular equipment as far as they can while they can keep up with the groundwater with pumps. And then depending on the pit and how aggressive they want to get, they'll bring in a dredge or they'll start with a long stick hoe and they'll start getting below the water level. Once they get below the water level, then it becomes a thing. Do they want to bring in a dredge and actually invest in that to keep going with the pit? So it just depends on the area. It depends on the pit owner and how aggressive they want to get, how much materials down there, stuff like that. So how long have you had your CDL? Uh, I've had it for basically a full year now. I so last. refresh my memory on the process because it has been about 10 years since I went and got mine. Um, you go take a paper test first, right? To get your right. permit. 
Yep. So for me, I guess there was there's three different fields, paper tests that I had to take. Yep. Um, there's like a general knowledge. Um, there's air brake endorsement, and then there's a combination uh, test or whatever. Yep. Um, basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. In order to have a drive a vehicle with air brakes, you need to have your air brake endorsement, and then. If you're taking your actual Class A, which is a combination of yep. so a truck and a tractor or trailer or whatever, yep. you have to take the combination test. And then obviously general knowledge is just everything in between. So once you take the written test and you pass all those for whatever you want to take or whatever class license you want to take, you can get you can get different endorsements. So like hazmat, you can get a hazmat endorsement. Um, I think you can get like a... Um, a tanker endorsement, stuff yep. like that, to haul liquids. And Doubles, triples. Yeah, yep. stuff like that. Multiple trailers. Um, so me, I just went with the Class A with the air brake endorsement because that's all I need. You know, I guess I didn't think that I'll be hauling tankers or, um, you know, anything hazardous, which maybe one day I suppose I could go on and just take the endorsement. So that's what I was about to add. If you don't get any of your endorsements, whether it's doubles, triples, uh, your hazmat, or your tanker, that's not that big of a deal. It's literally a trip to the secretary or state or whatever you call it in your state. You run up and you take a physical paper test, you pay a small fee, and as long as you pass the paper test, you have the endorsement. With the exception of a hazmat endorsement, with a hazmat endorsement, you do have to pay for a background check. It's gonna be a federal background check. I wanna say it costs, do you remember? It's like 100 bucks or something, 120? Yeah. I don't, I don't remember exactly. It's around there somewhere, I think, yeah. And so that's the only one that actually has another stipulation on it, is that you obviously have to pass the background check. Uh, for our industry, the only time you would really need a hazmat license is if you plan on being a low boy driver or your company wants you to drive a low boy and you're carrying large equipment and I'm talking like large off-road haul trucks 390 excavators uh, anything with a diesel tank over I think it's 200 gallons requires a hazmat certification to haul even though it's not a hazmat thing that you're hauling because it has that much diesel fuel in it you will need a hazmat license so most I would say 90% of this industry you're never gonna need your hazmat endorsement in the dirt world so for what it's worth so here's the little scale house, and this is pretty typical on most of your smaller operations. It's just a little trailer with a truck scale next to it. And as we pull up here to the loader, you're gonna hear Colton start to talk with the loader operator, tell him how much we need, and then he'll talk to the scale house as we scale out. So yeah, up here is there, it's where you dump the rubble or asphalt concrete, and then they push it over the edge here, and then they scoop it from here and put it on the crusher. Crush it. That's where you get the recycled concrete, class five, recycled class five. This is all wash rock over to the right here. Three to six inch, inch and a half, three quarter inch. It's all perfectly clean, washed. We just fired up the crusher today. It looks like. By the way, another quick thing I thought of. You may wonder, how does he know what channel on the CB to be on? Uh, almost, I say almost, every pit, when you pull in, if you're paying attention, has got a sign that will tell you what channel you need to be on. Uh, some of them do have separate channels for the loaders versus the scale house. Some of them, they're the same channel. It really just depends on the size of the pit. I think these guys actually have their own radio frequency. They have their own between the, the loaders and the scale? Just their company themselves. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, I guess, I don't know, whatever they can consider that. And so this is where the dirt's made. You're looking at a loader, pulling out raw material, putting it into the screener plant, and that's where the sand, pea stone, gravel, that's where it's all coming from. Get a load of 
of screen sand when you get a chance. It's got to be tricky screening when it gets cold like this, you yeah. know, big chunks of frozen earth and stuff, you know. I can't imagine the clean out at the end of the day too to make sure everything's going to run tomorrow. Yeah. That'd be a pain. Yeah. I know they got, you probably can't see it, but they got a little like open flame underneath the conveyor belt right there. Oh yeah, keep, sure enough. Keeps the, Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. Keeps the belt malleable or whatever so it doesn't crack and freeze. Thank you. And so we just got the communication, we're good to go. He said thanks to the loader operator, which you should always do, because that makes you a polite truck driver and he likes you. So now we're gonna go back up the hill and we're gonna go scale out. What she just gave him is what's called a pit ticket. It basically has the amount of material that you took out of the hole, and so that's gonna give you a copy for your records. You're also probably most more than likely gonna give a copy to your customer so that they are aware of how much material uh, went into the hole uh, where we're taking it. And you may ask yourself what happens if you get overloaded on that scale. Uh, most pits, it just it depends on the pit, I should say. So most pits will have a designated area that you can pull up to, you'll pop your tailgate, uh, and then depending on how overloaded you are, you may raise the box up a little bit and get out with a shovel and knock some material out. If you're way overloaded, you may actually raise it up a little bit, dump a little bit of material, and then you'll pull back around to the scale and rescale out. So that's how that works. And so that is a trip to the pit. I hope this has helped some of you guys understand that side of the operation. If you got any questions, absolutely don't hesitate to drop a comment below and uh, we'll catch you guys on another round.